Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons. Today I have prepared two multiply choice questions for you. And uh, as usual, I recommend you to stop video here, read the questions, answers, choose your correct answer. And when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. And here is the first question. All of the following career types are found in spontaneous abortuses. Which of the following is least likely to be found in life born infant? And here we have five uh, answers to choose from. And let's analyze everyone. So um, here, answer A, we have 46 uh, XY career type. And actually this is normal career type of the normal healthy person. So uh, this is not our answer because we are looking for the least likely and uh, 45x career type would be when uh, this is phenotypically would be female but would miss one x chromosome because a female has two x chromosomes and as you see in this career type uh, this female miss one x chromosome and uh, this would be life born uh, infant because uh, it is uh, relatively easy can be tolerated because uh, anyway when female has two X chromosomes one would be turned off and form bar body so this is also not our answer and next is answer C 47 xx plus 21 what does it mean that means that um, normally we have 46 chromosomes 23 pairs of chromosomes and phenotypically this is female because has two x chromosomes but has also one extra chromosome and this number stands for the which chromosome is extra and here we see extra 21 chromosome so this is would be trisonomy 21 or we also call this um, down syndrome so this would be female with down syndrome and this is not our answer also we can see such people with this syndrome this is rare syndrome but still not uh, as rare as um, our two examples left and here we have uh, also Trisonomy 16 that also happens in humans, but uh, it is more rare disorder, genetic disorder, and uh, we also cross out this answer. And what we left is 69 XXX. So, what does it mean? Uh, if we have um, two sets of chromosomes, for one from mother's side, another from the father's side, 23 chromosomes, so 23 plus 23 would be 46 and here we have full extra set of chromosomes for example on the mother side um, in the X cell non disjunction happened and uh, in X cell we can find two sets of chromosomes so total number would be 46 plus 23 chromosomes from the uh, sperm would give us this genotype or karyotype but also I would tell you that um, if it is can be tolerated in plants for example we can find uh, many plants that is uh, triploid and this is not uh, trisonomy. Trisonomy is when one extra chromosome is present in diploid organism so as you see in our examples here we saw trisonomy of the 21 chromosome so we have one extra chromosome um, in the karyotype and here trisonomy of uh, 16th um, chromosome and once again this give us plus one chromosome but here we have whole set of chromosomes so we don't call this uh, trisonomy we call this triploidy because whole set of chromosomes we can find uh, extra here and this is uh, as I said uh, can happen in plants 
many plants are triploid, for example, um, seedless watermelon is triploid and uh, banana is triploid. We also have uh, pears triploid and uh, apples. And of course, grapes, seedless grapes would be also triploid. But such conditions is not tolerated in humans. So this would be most rare condition. So our answer would be answer E. And next uh, question, if one out of every 250,000 people have disease X, a non-lethal autosomal recessive disorder, what is the approximate carrier frequency of this disease? And uh, you have to assume Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. So in order to solve this problem, we need to know Hardy-Weinberg formula. And this is binomial expansion. Probably everyone knows this formula. So uh, F, that stands for the frequency of the three genotypes that can be made by two alleles, would equal to P squared plus 2PQ plus q squared and equals to 1. And all the alleles p plus all the alleles q would equal to 1. And p squared, squared here stands for the homozygous dominant condition, 2pq for the heterozygous condition, and uh, q squared for the homozygous recessive genotype. And p would be dominant allele a and q recessive allele A. So if we know that condition happens in one out of 250,000 people, so we can say that uh, Q squared would be um, 0 0.000004. So we divide 1 by 250,000. And this is going to be our uh, number that uh, would stand for this phenotype. So person who is going to be homozygous recessive would be affected. And now we have to find this number. How we are going to do it? This is also very easy. If we know that Q squared equals to this number, so we can find Q. So we just have to take a square root of this number. So Q would equal to square root of 0 0.000004 and the answer would be 0 0.002 so when we know the frequency of the Q that is 0 0.002 we can easily find uh, frequency of the P or dominant allele A. So we just have to subtract from 1 the frequency of the Q. So 1 minus 0 0.002 would equal to frequency of P and this is going to be 0 0.998. So this is going to be frequency of the P allele. So now we know everything in order to find frequency of the heterozygous genotype. So this would be 2PQ. And this is going to be heterozygous genotype would equal to 2 multiplied by frequency of P. And this is 0 0.998 and multiply it by frequency of Q, that is 0 0.002. And the answer would be 0 0.004. I am rounding numbers to three decimal places. So uh, this number would equal to uh, answer C. If we divide 1 by 250, we are going to get uh, 0.004. So the correct answer C. And uh, this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. 
Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.